All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of hell. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 60, and I am interrupting our regularly scheduled programming, which would have been a tour inside of the Great Pyramid of Giza, with breaking news regarding new Doppler radar internal scans of the pyramid that reveal the potential for a variety of components that still remain hidden inside of the structure. And I wanted to be the first to release this new research to the public and provide a full explanation of the results that you will not see or hear anywhere else. So they also present numerous diagrams of these features that I will also be discussing today and providing a functional interpretation for exactly how these new components could have been integrated into the operation of the structure. This is truly groundbreaking research, ladies and gentlemen. And at the end of the video, I will show you once again how the science has verified one of the hypotheses that I have proposed, not only here in the channel, but also in my book, that there is indeed an extraction shaft located inside of the Queen's Chamber that was utilized to remove the dilute sulfuric acid solution from these reactors. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button because you do not want to miss the next episode that I have coming up in the series. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up Land of Chem merch, grab yourself a limited first edition print copy of the book. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And the following research comes from a recently published paper, Synthetic Aperture Radar Doppler Tomography Reveals Details of Undiscovered High-Resolution Internal Structure of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And what you are about to see is going to blow your mind. So the team used this technology to scan the Great Pyramid, and it produced images like you can see here on the right side, which they have also overlaid on a diagram here on the left. And at this point, I will say that these results are very inconclusive, and the diagrams that they present are a bit of a stretch of the imagination based on what I can see from these scan images. As you can see here on the right, the data return can be very difficult to interpret, and extrapolating exact details from this is speculative at best. So keep in mind that these scans were taken from a satellite and the capabilities of this technology are one of the main discussion points of this research paper. However, these scans do absolutely reveal that there are 100% still features and possibly functional components that remain hidden inside of the Great Pyramid. So this is a 37 page paper with a laborious explanation and discussion of this Doppler scanning technology, which I have removed for the sake of our discussion, that is followed by the presentation of some of the scan results and their 3D computer models of this data. So starting here on the top right, you can see tag number one, which is depicted on the 3D model as this large step-like feature, which you can see here. Then you have tag number four, descending down into the bedrock, which is shown on their 3D model as this large feature descending down number here at number four. Then you have tag number seven running east to west, which is a feature running east to west beneath the pyramid located here. And on this one and the second one below, they are showing these exact same components on the other side. So you have tag number two featured here, which is represented on the diagram as this step-like feature on the other side of the pyramid. You have tag number five here, dropping down into the bedrock, which is this large feature on the other side, descending down into the bedrock. And you have tag number nine, which is this chamber-like feature at number nine on the 3D model. So as I began to review this document, I immediately thought that this frame here, composed of one, two, four, and five, appeared to be a semi-collapsible recoil mechanism with a cantilever running east to west here at tag number seven. So we know that the king's chamber or sulfur furnace, as I have proposed 
underwent a combustion cycle to initiate the production. And this chamber system is surrounded by a cavity within the pyramid. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The sulfur furnace is a freestanding structure within the pyramid, and it is not completely surrounded by stone and locked into the core of the structure. Thus, it was engineered with room to move, and this recoil counterbalance system could have mitigated the internal forces during this stage of the reaction process. And I shared this paper with a few of my friends and colleagues, mainly Larry from the American Institute of Pyramid Research and my friend Brandon, who also has an interesting work in progress theory regarding the function of the Great Pyramid. He and I came to the exact same conclusion about this cantilever internal dampening system, which is no surprise as we have also reached the same conclusions about a number of details in our theories. He has found some of the same physics and chemistry that I originally discovered in my research a few years ago, but he is just proposing a much different ultimate goal, which I will leave up to him to reveal. However, I would like to give him credit for proposing that this step-like feature could have also been part of the water lock system that was used in the construction process to raise large granite blocks into the core of the pyramid. I presented this same hypothesis in my previous episode 38, Building the Great Pyramid with Water, and I will put a link in the video description below, as it is an amazing episode that contains two theories from different researchers, both of which propose different ways that water lock systems, very similar to this, could have been used to build the pyramids, and I was blown away when I heard this interpretation from Brandon of these newly discovered features because it would make a lot of sense that there would be possibly vestiges from the construction process left over inside of the pyramid that became obsolete once the structure was completed. So shout out to you, Brandon, and good work. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. All right, everyone, tis the season. And just a quick reminder that brand new Land of Chem merch is finally available at thelandofchem.com. I've got hoodies, long sleeve t-shirts, of course, the original Land of Chem t-shirts, and don't forget, limited first edition print copies of the book, The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, all available now at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can grab a hoodie, pick up a t-shirt, grab one of these limited first edition print copies of the book. Either way, all of the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. So for anyone that's new to the channel, my theory is that the Great Pyramid of Giza was designed to produce a dilute solution of sulfuric acid. And this is a depiction of the modern version of the exact same reaction now called the contact process. And the contact process involves the combustion of sulfur and air inside of a sulfur furnace to produce sulfur dioxides that are then dissolved into water to produce a solution of sulfuric acid that is then extracted from the reactors. So let's go through a very quick review of how this happened inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. So step number one, is activating the subterranean pump to push water up into the contact process chamber. Step number two is initiating the combustion of sulfur and air inside of the sulfur furnace. Step number three is drawing those gases through the antechamber by dropping the water level inside the contact process chamber. This also pulls more air in through the intake shafts which further fuels the combustion and production of sulfur dioxides within this furnace. The contact process chamber is filling with these sulfur dioxides and the water level is raised again, bringing the water into contact with the sulfur dioxides which are highly soluble and dissolve to create a sulfurous and then a dilute sulfuric acid solution. This process is highly exothermic, generating tremendous amounts of heat, which I will be getting to that soon, and also discussing in the tour video from inside of this contact process chamber. And you will see that the entire chamber looks like it was baked at high temperatures. And this is a direct result of this exothermic reaction. I am also leaving out a number of important details that are included in the book, but the reaction sequence culminates by the extraction of the product from the queen's chamber or extraction chamber. And I have proposed not only in my book, but also on multiple occasions here on the channel that there is absolutely an extraction shaft system located beneath the niche in the queen's chamber. 
which you can see here. And the opening of this shaft system has been covered up by modern concrete blocks. And the conventional story goes that this area was excavated and it only went down a couple of inches, so they covered back up. However, I was always very dubious of that explanation, and I was elated to discover that in these new scans, they may have also inadvertently provided the greatest evidence of and possibly confirming my theory for this extraction shaft. So you can see here, the scan overlaid on a diagram of the Great Pyramid. And here in the center is the extraction chamber. And you will notice this curved green signature coming down from the floor. And you can see that signature here on the right highlighted in what they are showing in component number three, which you can now see here in yet another absolutely fascinating rendering of these new internal features. And you can see this extraction shaft system, which leads to a possible collection tank. There could have also been a valve mechanism here, which allows water to reflux back down to the subterranean chamber here during the flushing and cleaning process. And yes, of course, these things were flushed, cleaned, and regularly maintained, just like any modern chemical factory. And you can see here, the termination of this extraction shaft system leads to yet another underground collection chamber. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, yet another scientific breakthrough from mainstream academia, just like the chemical analyses that further provide evidence for my theory that the Egyptian pyramids were producing chemicals on an industrial scale. And I haven't even gotten to any of these other features yet, which I've already accounted for the presence of and the function and we'll be discussing soon. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 60, breaking news regarding new Doppler radar internal scans of the Great Pyramid and the potential for hidden chambers. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I wanted to present today's episode and this amazing new research as a preface to the next episode in the series, which will be that exclusive tour inside of the Great Pyramid where I describe exactly how all of these components operate and I take you through the reaction process from live inside of the structure. And I think this was perfect timing because now we get to go into that episode knowing about the potential for all of these chambers that still remain hidden inside of the pyramid. Once again, absolutely groundbreaking research and it is so fulfilling to see that the science is once again validating my theories. So I will put a link to the original paper in the video description below if you wanna check it out. And just know, if you see this research making the rounds, you heard it here first. So ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. There's Land of Chem merch, first edition print copies of the book. Thank you all so much for your support. Follow me on Instagram at the Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. <laughs>